Welcome to World Ocean Radio. I'm Peter Neal, director of the World Ocean Observatory. As the world turns around war and threats of war, the ocean may seem again a place apart. There is geopolitical anxiety in the Taiwan Straits, for example, where naval operations and incremental bellicose gestures reveal the tension over control of key maritime areas and ship routes that affect other financial maneuvers, including supply chain interruption, market instability, and trade relations as surrogate fields for political disagreements. But this week's things changed, not in Asia, but in the Baltic Sea and North Atlantic, where underwater cables and pipelines serve as essential conduits for transaction, energy transfer, and international communications. Those facilities are mostly unknown to the general public, but without them, the public and its interests would be severely curtailed, another function of the ocean around which so much of our modern world is organized. This week, the underwater gas pipelines, Nord Stream 1 and 2, connecting Poland to Norway as a future distribution route for Russian gas sold to Europe, were sabotaged by as yet unidentified agents. Neither pipeline was operational, but the breaches caused several enormous leaks of methane contained within into the ocean and atmosphere. Methane is, of course, a prime contributor to climate change, and this incident has been described as the largest single methane release in recorded history. The leadership of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization characterized the action as deliberate, reckless, and irresponsible. Suspicion fell immediately on the Russian government, but there are questions as to why it would sabotage what was the instrument for gas sales to needy European markets and a necessary means for future capital. As the European community, already aware of its vulnerability in the coming winter, is already positioning itself for alternative supply from the Arab countries and other non-Russian producers, obviating the strategic significance of Nord Stream. There is, in fact, a new pipeline for this purpose from Poland to Norway that runs in parallel and in some places crosses the Nord Stream line. The causative explosions were of earthquake scale. According to recent news reports, the German security forces estimated the explosive charges as equivalent to 500 tons of TNT. The Swedish National Seismic Network used its earthquake monitoring devices to estimate the largest explosion at 100 to 200 tons of TNT. In addition, reports of unidentified drones in the area and in the Norwegian offshore oil fields drove the speculation of sabotage. Perhaps it will shortly be explained who did it and why, but under these circumstances lies another vulnerability. The ability of manned or remotely operated submersibles to access these pipelines and cables to disrupt transaction and exchange of funds and information that would affect every person on Earth, every aspect of how our lives are organized and linked. Such a strategy perpetrated by a leader or government with no care for the consequences is almost unthinkable, but so too it can be argued for the use of tactical nuclear weapons to destroy and contaminate people, places, and institutions on which the world relies. In a recent World Ocean Radio edition, I described the contradiction between sovereignty and commonality. Here is a tragic, perfect example. One nation, one leader, obsessed by a sovereign command, without compromise or allegiance to values outside narrow territorial victory and nationalistic gratification. The Nord Stream sabotage is more than a singular event with tragic localized consequence. It is a symbol of disconnection, ironically placed on the ocean floor as part of a system of connection, invisible underwater. It's a line still cosmically crossed, a moral outrage. We will discuss these issues and more in future editions of World Ocean Radio. World Ocean Radio is distributed by the Public Radio Exchange and the Pacifica Network for use by college and community radio stations worldwide. We are grateful to the staff, volunteers, and supporters of WERU-FM 98.9 in Blue Hill, Maine, for broadcasting the first World Ocean Radio episode more than 10 years ago and continuing to run episodes each week without interruption since. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts and at (laughs) worldoceanobservatory.org. 